Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Echo Tingo Echo voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag. Dat is het bulletin van zaterdag. Today's bulletin is always on Saturdays will be in English. At the end of the bulletin we first have the Morse code words and after that an SSTV image in PD50 which can be received on smartphone using for instance Robot36 on Android and CQ SSTV on iOS. CQ, 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 calling all radio amateurs and shortwave listeners, this is GB2RS, the news broadcasting service of the Radio Society of Great Britain. It comes to you from G4NJH in Nottingham in the UK. You can find the text of the bulletin in the RSGB's own web pages. Now for the radio propagation report compiled by G0KYA, G3YLA and G4BAO. This week the solar flux index managed to remain almost above 100 thanks in part to a large sunspot number 2546. The region appears to be quite stable and not a likely threat for any significant solar flares. Geomagnetic conditions remained unsettled with the K-index hitting 4 at times often hovering between 2 and 3. This was due to an ongoing coronal hole activity and the associated high-speed solar wind streams. This is likely to continue as a coronal hole positioned near the solar equator. As I'm sorry, I'll read that again. This is likely to continue as a coronal hole situated near the solar equator was threatening to send the K index higher on Friday the 20th. As we head towards midsummer, heating in the northern hemisphere coupled with a change in ionospheric chemistry will see daylight critical frequencies reduce from their high in spring. We can see this by looking at the noontime critical frequencies as measured by the Chiltern Ionoson near Harwell. In mid-April the critical frequency was exceeding 7 megs on good days. This month it's struggling to get past 6. However, nighttime critical frequencies are remaining higher, which is a signature of summer HF propagation. By June you may see 20 metres remaining open all night. Contacts via sporadic key on 10 metres should be abundant, but keep an eye on 20 metres at night as it may throw up a few surprises after dark. Now for VHF and up, there are conflicting views on the weather story for next week. However, one common theme is that in the model outputs is that for a brief period we will find a weak ridge of high pressure nearby during the first part of the week. This may produce limited tropo, especially overnight and in the early mornings. From about midweek, the high weakens and a slack pressure pattern remains. This will mean a more showery weather type with options for rain scatter on the gigahertz band from any heavy thunders showers. Sporadic key is always a viable option any day during the summer months from May to August, so it's worth checking first on 10 metres for short skip conditions within Europe and then moving up to a higher band as any opening develops. Quite often the greater ranges are found as each band opens. This is because over time the sporadic key patch will usually slowly descend within the E region, shortening the path length. For EME operators, the moon's declination is at its lowest on Tuesday, so there'll be short windows, but losses are decreasing all week as the moon's orbit brings it closer to Earth. Remember that as well as our natural satellite, there's always VHF DX potential using the many operational man-made satellites. Look at the AMSAT UK website for details. And that's it for this week from the Propagation Team. Glenn Johnson, W0GJ, was a member of the K1N D expedition to Navassa Island, which was voted the expedition of the year 2015. It was a once in 32 year D expedition and the number one most wanted entity in Europe. In October 2015, he was the keynote speaker at the RSGB convention. If you weren't able to visit the convention to hear the lecture, RSGB members can go to the rsgb.org forward slash video and click the RSGB 2015 convention link. In 2016, the convention is looking forward to welcoming Mike K9AJ from the Intrepid DX Group, the expedition, to the remote British territories of South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands earlier this year. He'll be describing the challenges, hardships and problems they faced and the experience of operating around the clock from some of the wildest parts of the planet in order to make around 140,000 contacts. Booking information can be found at rsgb.com uh, sorry, rsgb.org forward slash convention, where you can look on the convention logo to book. 
Amateurs are advised that updates to a small number of band plans will occur on the 1st of June. This follows approval of proposals agreed at the recent IARU Region 1 interim meeting. The update to 80 metres, 30 metres and VHF will provide greater flexibility for narrow band modes. The RSGB website and RADCOM will be updated to carry details in due course. A team of live Australian radio amateurs will activate Norfolk Island IOTA OC005 until the 31st of May to coincide with the Wireless Institute of Australia 2016 Annual General Meeting and Conference, also being held on Norfolk Island. The VK9NT crew plan to operate on the 160 to 10 metre bands using SSBCW and RITI. Activity on RITI will be confined to just a couple of bands to maximise maximize all time new ones. The WIA commemorative station VI9 ANZAC will also be active from Norfolk Island over the AGM weekend. The Hubble Space Telescope has produced another of its stunning port portraits of Mars, the red planet and Earth are nearing what is called opposition, when their orbits line them up with the Sun and put them very close to each other. This occurs every 780 days or so. The actual moment of opposition is today the 22nd at 11.10 UTC. The two planets' closest approach follows just a few days later on the 30th. There will be just 75 million kilometres between the two planets on that day. Astronomers with smaller te telescopes than Hubble will be grabbing the chance to view Mars at the, week at the week ahead. The planetary alignment means the red planet's disk, as well as being larger in the sky than usual, is also fully illuminated. The images can be found on www.nasa.gov website. The RSGB is delighted that Roger Ballister, G3KMA, is one of the 2016 inductees in the CQDX Hall of Fame. As manager of the Islands on the Air program since 1985, Roger has seen IOTA grow from a few hundred early participants to more than 10,000 today, making it one of the most popular award programs in amateur radio. The CQDX and contest halls of fame honours those amateurs who not only excel in personal performance in these major areas of amateur radio, but also give back to the hobby in outstanding ways. Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks om 1900 uur te beluisteren op PI2NOS en s ochtends om half elf. Aanvullende informatie bij de uitzendingen is te vinden op www.pa0ete.nl. Wil verder gerust je tips, commentaar en desnoods priet praten naar xapenstaartjexdv.me. Ik heb vandaag een nieuwe antenne tuner gekocht. Oh ja, wat ga je daar dan mee doen? Ja, dat weet ik nog niet. Ik heb begrepen dat je er de golven mee kunt laten staan. Staat dat beter dan als die golven staan? Ik zou eerder zeggen als ze toch slapen, laat ze dan maar liggen. Dat weet ik eigenlijk niet of golven wel kunnen liggen. Ze kunnen echter wel staan. Zitten doen ze ook niet? Nee, zitten doen ze ook dus niet.